And because it is Monday and because I'm pretty sure we're still in a pandemic, we've been talking to our friend, uh, Dr. Dennis Norm from Mercy Health for uh, over a year now, where he, he gives us the medical take on what's going on. And uh, today's, is, today's Monday is no different. Dr. Norm, how are we doing this morning? I'm doing well, guys. We're doing well. Good uh, to be on. Good, good to be on. Where are, are you? Uh, are you here locally? Or are you out in Arizona right now? No, back from vacation. Actually, spent some time near Telluride, Colorado. Beautiful place. Telluride, Colorado. That's a good time out there. Just, do you know somebody out there? Or is it just uh, just just a trip? Uh, through a connection, we got a house on an alpine lake called Trout Lake, up about uh, nine thousand feet, mm. and it was just beautiful up there. Did you catch any trout in Trout Lake? I caught one. <laughs> caught one. Uh, uh, do, do we eat it or do we do we send it back? I uh, know it, it was a small one. I sent it back. I was hoping to catch a bunch, but uh, uh, I'm a lousy fisherman. I'll it's, be honest. Hey, uh, 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 right around on a lake in uh, in Colorado, uh, not catching fish is probably better than just hanging out at home. So that's that's All that's. Right. Yeah, any day not catching fish is, is better than uh, being in 100-degree uh, weather in uh, Tucson. Yeah. However, uh, as you can see, uh, Tucson got walloped with rain and a lot of flooding, so it's been interesting weather. It has been interesting uh, everywhere we go. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to have you, have you here on today. I'm excited, uh, one, because uh, uh, mostly because we got, we got Tom uh, on the line here who has uh, uh, boots on the ground, as we say, uh, down in Florida, which is, uh, is, is seeing a spike. And uh, that's, uh, that's, we've had you on for, a long, for, for, for about a year now. And uh, it, it seems, you know, the messaging is, is pretty much the same that we've had. You know, uh, uh, go out, uh, get vaccinated. Uh, let's, let's kind of put an end to this. That's been the biggest bugaboo lately. It seems like maybe opinions are shifting. Maybe, maybe some that were, were, were not on board of vaccinations are, are maybe starting to do it. Is this, uh, uh, you, you have your own boots on the ground, you have your, your connection. Are you seeing with this Delta variant uh, uh, surging in uh, close to home here down in Missouri uh, about to creep up into Illinois? Are you, are you seeing at, at, at the hospital more vaccinations being taken? Would, how, what, what is the, uh, what's the feeling amongst your, your patients? I think we're seeing a, a little more uh, a rise in vaccinations. I think the numbers indicate that. Uh, I'd be curious to, to see what uh, Tom thinks down in Florida, as it appears to be one of the hot spots, along with Arkansas, Louisiana, Missouri, and uh, I believe uh, Nevada seem to have uh, quite a rise because they had relatively low vaccination rates. So uh, I, I'd be curious to see what he's hearing down there. Yeah, it's interesting, Doctor. We, um, I'm just checking this out here. Where, where the, we've got the most number of cases in the last few weeks. It's increased uh, dramatically here. It's made national news, of course. I guess, uh, I guess nationally, it's what 57 percent we have vaccinated, fully vaccinated. 50, 57 percent. Whereas down here in Florida, I'm seeing just under that at 55 percent. So. Uh, th things are, you know, down here in Florida, as you guys know, I mean, things are pretty relaxed. And they've been, I mean, pretty relaxed. Uh, we're at the highest rates we've seen since mid-January down here in Florida. Not in the area that I'm at. The, most of this, obviously, is down in uh, uh, Broward County, down in the Miami area. I'm in the Tampa area. So up here, it's a little bit lower as far as statewide goes. But definitely, you know, definitely seeing the numbers surging here with this uh, Delta variant sort of leading the charge and whatnot. Again, primarily for uh, hitting mostly unvaccinated people, according to, uh, according to the stats here. Yeah, so we're in uh, Delta variant, something we've heard about uh, uh, for a while now. Uh, as I said before, uh, it's, it's, it's very prevalent in, in Missouri, uh, one of our, our border states. Another variant that I've been seeing in some news reports is, is the Lambda variant. Uh, what do we know about the Lambda and how concerned should we be in the area about that right now, Doctor? I uh, don't know too much yet about Lambda, um, and it doesn't appear that Lambda is going to be any worse than Delta, but I think the, we're not sure yet about that. And I think the other important thing about Missouri and Southern Illinois is I think the vaccination rates in Southern Illinois are similar to the lower vaccination rates in all of these states that are seeing the surge, and it clearly is the issue. If you're in an area with low vaccination rates, you're much higher risk of getting uh, infected. Right now, that is the Delta variant. I heard a good uh, uh, perspective.
active on the Delta variant. They said it took about three months for the UK variant to become the dominant variant. It's taken three weeks for the Delta variant to become the dominant variant. And I believe it's now 80 to 90 percent of all new infections are the Delta variant. And we're still uh, we're still seeing you know people e even though some that are are the fully vaccinated still still coming down uh, are testing positive uh, for for COVID nineteen are do we know that those being tested positive still the vaccine is that is that the original uh, uh, virus is this all variants that are are affecting vaccinated folks or uh, or a mix between the two and is it still just uh, you can still catch it, but it's still still lightening the load uh, that, that you get if you do come down with it, right? Right. It's the Delta variant. As I said, it's probably 80 uh, percent. There's some of the uh, UK variant still floating around and some of the original variant, but it's probably 80 percent Delta variant. Uh, people who have been vaccinated are more likely now to get infected. However, the chance of having serious illness being hospitalized is extremely, extremely small. Uh, I think the number they're still quoting is 99.5% of all hospitalization uh, and deaths are related to non or are in non-vaccinated patients. Having said that, though, there's still a small, very tiny number of people who've been vaccinated who are still at risk of serious infection, which is unfortunate, which gets back to our issue of why can't we get people vaccinated? So if, uh, let's say, in, in a perfect world where, uh, you know, uh, vac uh, vaccines come out, everyone's excited about it, we get, uh, we get you know, 70, 80, 85% vaccinated uh, right away, would we have still been seeing these variants uh, pop out? We, I mean, did we just... Would it would they come out just maybe it would have taken a little bit longer? Did we did we expedite the variant process? Could we have avoided them altogether? Uh, what do you think if we would have gotten on higher vaccinated rates a little bit earlier? Well, the higher vaccinated rates it would have been much less likely uh, if we could have vaccinated the whole world in a very timely manner. We would have seen very few variants. Uh, in large numbers of unvaccinated patients, you can kind of think uh, the virus has uh, time to mutate. It uh, allows the virus uh, to do this, and it it creates these uh, opportunities for uh, mutation. If we could have gotten our rates within the last three to four months, I think up to 85, 90%, our risk of more variants would have decreased significantly. However, we're dependent on a whole worldwide population. So even if we would have done well, the variants would have still popped up, certainly in other parts of the world. Can we talk about uh, other parts of the world uh, lagging severely behind us in vaccinations, not just, uh, you know, your third world countries. Where, I mean, the Olympics going on right now in Japan is a, is a famously low, uh, low vaccination rate. How is the world uh, getting with catching up to the rest, to, to us uh, with vaccination rates? I think things are improving a little bit. I think, however, you... Uh, put a, a good example there where Japan, a country we would have thought that would have been well along in terms of vaccination is it's something like less than 20 percent, which is uh, really kind of pathetic. Uh, many of the European countries are starting to catch up uh, maybe in the 30 to 40 percent. Uh, obviously, countries like uh, UK have done better and Israel has done quite well. They've probably led the nation. But uh, Many of the westernized countries are lagging way behind, and they're seeing the uh, effects of that. Is the majority, uh, what's the main reason? Is, is it just vaccine availability, or is it, is it vaccine hesitancy, uh, other places like we have it here, that's, that's slowing the rate down? Well, it's still both, but in most of the westernized countries, uh, I think the majority of it has been uh, vaccine availability. My... Uh, sister-in-law who lives in the Netherlands finally got her uh, second vaccine shot. I think she got Pfizer just in the last week and she was wanting to get it right from the get-go. She had no hesitation. So it's availability. Now, if you go to the third world countries, it's clearly availability. There just isn't any uh, significant amount of vaccine for those countries uh, to administer. 
And as, as, as we start to see, you know, numbers climb, uh, I think everybody's getting, getting nervous that we might have to return to a world that we were living in, you know, uh, eight, nine months ago. Uh, I personally don't think a, a, a lockdown would be accepted or, or, or enforced at all. But masks, uh, will a mask mandate, you think, be coming down the pipeline here before, you know, we get back to, you know, back, back to school season? Certainly a lot of discussion about that. I agree with you. I don't think any of us have the stomach for a lockdown. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen. I think mask mandates may be something that uh, we're going to have to go back to. And uh, certainly in areas where there's been these hot spots and outbreaks, it does make some sense. And unfortunately, uh, mask mandates are the only way to get everybody to mask up, even the vaccinated people, because as we've mentioned in the past, uh, Many of the people who refuse to vaccinate are not going to uh, self-identify and say, "Well, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to wear a mask. I'm not vaccinated." They're just not going to. We've already seen that, so I think we are looking at the possibility of some mask mandates. And along with that, I think the area that's going to be most critical is vaccine man- mandates. You can see many many major colleges and universities have announced that they're going to require vaccines or else you can't attend in person. Is a, is a, is a vaccine mandate uh, going to pop up at hospitals, at doctor's offices? Do you guys already have one? What's, uh, what's, what's specifically Mercy Health is, uh, Mercy Health's uh, stance on that? We don't currently have one, but it's been announced that we will have one. I believe we've been given a, a deadline of, I believe it's October 1st, that all employees will need to be vaccinated by October 1st. Um, uh, since we do have, have time here, I do want to ask him. I, I have noticed just going out over the weekend, uh, grocery shopping and whatnot, I, I've already noticed a, a pop-up in, in, in people wearing masks out in public. Tom, I, I, do you notice any of that down in Florida, or is that messaging not, not, not reached our, our, our southern friends yet? No, it's, it's, it's not reached anybody here. And, I, you know, uh, we, there's... The governor of this state is very vocal about not wanting to mandate any of that, masks or, or vaccines or anything, as anybody probably knows. You just got to watch the news. He's, he's been on since Florida's gotten all this attention of being the, uh, the, one, the biggest hotspot right now in, in the country. So uh, I'm not seeing any difference uh, in my day-to-day life when I'm out and about with, with masks or anything like that anywhere else. But I can tell you this, as a person who is vaccinated and concerned about this, uh, you know, I've I've uh, I've got it back with me, and you know, it's one of those things where, you know, I feel like I need to do my part in this, uh, whether I like it or not. Uh, personally, is pretty much irrelevant. I've got a responsibility for you know who I'm around, the greater good, etc. That's my position. So, I don't know if that's going to change down here in Florida anytime soon, uh, especially with the messaging that we have. But we'll see. This wildly altruistic view you have there, Tom. Do they know about that down in Florida? I'm not sure, okay. but, uh, you know, if any of them are listening now, uh, you know, <laughs> maybe I could affect some change in my little tiny corner of the world here. So That's, uh, that's, that's good. Uh, doctor, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, before I let you go here, uh, did, we, did we miss anything? Did you want to hit anything before, uh, before we said goodbye? Uh, n- nothing else. I'm glad to hear uh, Tom's comment. I mean, that's the whole point of getting vaccinated. Vaccinations protect yourself, and they protect other people who are around you and I hope we can get more people on that message. Absolutely. Uh, Dr. Norum, uh, you join us again next next Monday. I don't think the pandemic is going to be over by next Monday. I wish it was, but I'll be talking to you Monday. I appreciate it. That's uh, Dr. Norum from Mercy Health.